All right, ladies and gentlemen, Ryan Reese back here with the Professional Long Drivers Association. We're here at the Diamond in the Desert in a glorious Mesquite, Nevada, or Nevada, depending on where you're from. Uh, we're going to start out with the world champion Kyle Brookshire in slot number one, Taiga Tozawa, fresh from Japan. That's nice. We're getting some of the international competitors coming out to the tour events now. Yep, Victor Bourget, I think that's how you pronounce it. And then longtime competitor Mark Costello is in slot number four. This is Mark's first event, I believe, since 2019. So uh, good to see him out competing again. Should be uh, the condition. We'll give you a little re rundown on the conditions here. It is hot and getting hotter. The uh, wind right now is a right-to-left breeze, not real strong. I would say about eight, maybe mile, eight, nine miles per hour the most. It was swirling earlier in the earlier round. Um, congratulations to Ryan Gregnall, who had the longest ball today so far, 385. We'll see if these guys can top that right from the get-go. Grateful for all you uh, first-time tuner inners. Glad to have you here. And uh, if you want, pull up the uh, chat box on the live feed, and I'll answer some questions if you'd like. Well, I thought Tyga almost lost uh, the club on that. He finished with one hand on that. And it looks like we're missing uh, Mark Costello. I'm not sure. Oh, sorry. We got a ghost player. I, Mark Costello is in the second group. That's, yeah, ghost player. Sweet. And uh, running to the tee box now to the booth, Mr. Robert Bradley the second. Is it the Howdy. second? No, no. My, me and my dad have different middle names. Yep. Robert Leonard and Robert Timothy. You look like a Timothy. I'm a Leonard. You're a Leonard. <laughs> I took my grandfather's name. <laughs> nice, nice. I would pay a premium for a chair. Hey, I, I, I wanted to know. Uh, oh, we're going to send my son off to get a chair for you. Get it now. Is, is this the first competition that Kyle Brookshire has been in shorts? I think is it? it is. I think it is. I've never really? seen him. I mean, I've seen him practice in shorts a lot, but I've never seen him practice or uh, compete. And this is this is the secret. It's out. A lot of guys, a lot of people don't know. Kyle has some monster calf muscles. He does. He does. That's a. I'm going to say that's where 90 percent of his swing speed comes from. Kyle looks great. No, he was working on with with Coach Bobby Peterson. His spin rates right now, and uh, a little bit dyna different dynamic with the five guys at a, instead of eight in the round robin to advance. We mentioned before, 550 kind of gets you in somewhere in that ballpark instead of like a 400 to 450. And um, I think it gives guys, you know, they got to be on their game right out the blocks. It's definitely, I mean, I that was my approach this morning uh, when, you know, you're thinking about you got to put some wins up. You can't just limp in here and there yeah, taking well, second place. Is, you got to get a couple that, of victories. This grid fits your eye. And it's nice to see Maurice. I just uh, got to hang out with him on the range. Uh, he'll be hitting here in a couple sets. Um, 2018 world champion, and and I, you know, jokingly said, I think he's won on every single continent besides Antarctica. You know, he's he's won tournaments. He's well all traveled. Over the world. Yeah, definitely well traveled. And uh, ended up, I just wanted to make sure that I was getting statistics right. He had five broken bones in his left hand, and he said one of the bones it, it practically it died. You know, in his hand. And uh, but I watched him hit a couple balls in the range, and he looks great. Really, really good. Um, Speed looks good. He looks like, good. I mean, ball striking. He's hitting it in the center of the face, and uh, really nice ball flight. And you know, what Maurice did really well back in 2018 was he was able to carry it a couple yards farther than everybody. And uh, it was it was a yeah, carry was grid in 2018. Like 220. It was yeah. just the height. The apex was like 220. Yeah. And he was. Uh, I mean, he was. Yeah, he was launching at 190, 195 feet in the air, and he kind of stayed in that that ballpark and ended up winning a world championship in 2018. So. And his speeds weren't weren't overly powerful. Two ten, two twelve. Yeah. You know, and and uh, you know, like even Tim Burke, you know, won multiple world championships, but like even Tim focused on trying to be around two twelve to two fourteen, and he felt like that guy he got the most out of the golf ball at that speed. You know, um, so Brandon Flynn isn't here. Someone like Brandon Flynn, yeah. I, I feel would have a really good day today, uh, just based on the conditions. And we've had a little bit into the face. Um, 
we did see a, a set it, where it, it laid down. It laid yeah. down big time because the first couple balls, 335, was a decent ball at that time, and then the wind died down in the last minute and a half. 377 ended up taking down the set, and Landon and I spoke about, you know, within five minutes, the farthest ball went from 420 to 320, you know, and there's a hundred yard difference. So, Kyle out the blocks, 409, ho hum. Well, send a message, right? Yeah, I, the it, wind. The wind is it, it's died, right? Like yep. right now, even from five minutes ago. So, but yeah, you know, Kyle. I mean, I can I can talk about Kyle all day, which, like I said, we'll we'll talk about it here in a second about what he's really working on here in these first couple sets, spin rates. But this is a great great group of hitters. This is a a, a I would say a star studded group here. You got George Hegarty, who's a, a really, really good ball striker. Jacob Galladay, amazing ball striker. Maurice Allen, world champion, uh, great ball striker. And then Mark Costello, who's just fast as hell. And hadn't seen him in three years. And That's he ended up I, going yeah. 455 last time you saw him on television at the World Championships in 2019. And, and Costello is just so smooth. He's so fast. He, well, he doesn't even look fast except that bottom, you know, two or three feet before the ball. And yep. then it just... Speeds through, and he looks like he's been putting some uh, time at the gym. Yeah, looks, no, he said he uh, he was making his own and his own homemade pasta. Oh, and uh, got up it. to two. Well, he got up to two fifty, and he's then he got into a soccer league, and he and he, and he dropped down that weight. <laughs> so we're looking at Maurice Allen here in slot number three. Coming back, I said him and Costello. Uh, you know, they 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 hadn't competed in three years. Yeah, you know, and like I said, Maurice coming off an injury with the you know five broken bones in his left hand. And um, but he looked good on the range, really did. Yeah, Galladay's look filling it up as usual. I mean, that's his specialty. Yeah, good golfer, puts a lot of balls in play, flights the ball really well. Galladay, Agri, same thing. Yeah, Galladay ended up making a, a semifinal here with you guys in March. Yeah, hey, yeah, Zeus. He, he probably wants it into the wind as much as possible. Absolutely. And is it George Hegarty walked into my golf shop now three years ago. And, uh, you know, you just don't know. Like, you don't know. Like, no. And then all of a sudden, it's like, oh, that guy just put up 207. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like, where did that come from? He's smooth, too. He's a, he's a good golfer as well. Yes, he is. Played college yeah. golf. He's got some interesting workouts. If you check, I'm trying to think of his handle on Instagram. Is like pro golfer. Pro, pro golfer, yeah. Yeah. I really mean, focuses does on. Does a lot of, like, knees over toes and mm -hmm. that type of stuff. A lot yep. of flexibility and making the correct movements he focuses a lot on that in the golf swing the same way well based off of the reaction from jacob gall he didn't necessarily like the set that he hit in I haven't had any really reaction out of any of the guys right now yeah, i think some of them are trying to fill it feel it out you know you yeah. that first set you may feel like you hit a really good ball and then it comes back shorter than you mm -hmm. expected or i mean kyle just set a number of 409 right yeah longest ball of the day in the first set yeah the wind, to me, actually looks like on the tee box, it's a little bit of a tailwind. Mm -hmm. Not very strong, but you know, swirling. And that's expected later in the day. Uh, it's supposed to be 13 to 14 miles per hour or more downwind right to left, which is if you're hitting that high draw. Somebody like Colton Casto is going to oh. eat it up. Yep. We always say Colton uh, just, you know, just focusing on trying to hit the center of the club face and, and tighten up his uh, right to left, you know. Because he, I, you know, I watched him oh, on the range. All the speed in the world. Yeah. Let's see if we can get a refresh here. All right, here. we got a refresh. This is the first group here. Tyga went OB for a set. Kyle Berkshire, 409. Victor Bogart, 340. We're going to get a little technical assistance from uh, our man, Robbie Peterson here, the lettuce. We appreciate you putting all this together for us so Bobby and I can hear just hear our own voices. We love it. We love it. It's so smooth. Delicious. Oh, we got some questions. Remember the time Bobby Boucher showed up to halftime and the Mug Dogs won the <laughs> Bourbon Bowl? Absolutely. That's right. That's right. You better believe it. <laughs> oh, man. They had the best wide receiver since Joe Montana. <laughs> All right. Let's start off. Galladay, even though he didn't necessarily look like he liked his set, went 381. Mark Costello, 379. Maurice Allen, 374. And George Hegarty, 364. So that was a, that was a really good group of hitters right there. But you know Berkshire right out the blocks at 409, he looked phenomenal on the range. I mean he really has made the last three events being the World Championships look somewhat easy, even though we know it's not easy. Yeah. Um, I you know 
Justin James gave him a heck of a match in Florida last yeah. month. And, and, uh, and, and for me, like I said, those are the two best hitters on the planet the last five years. They've, they've yeah. you know, swapped back and forth numerous times. And um, is JJ here today? He's not. He's not. So I'm not sure uh, what happened, where he's He could have had his fourth kid. We, I, not, we don't I, know. I, I think that uh, <laughs> he may <laughs> he maybe did. But I know that for a lot of the competitors, this event, for some you know, with travel – just exploding and airlines uh, filling up. Their the the prices on flights are, are oh, really expensive. So we had several players that decided to push to Denver uh, to some other events. We're gonna the schedule is gonna pick up here pretty quick. So in a few weeks we go to Denver, June 10th through the 12th, and then we go two weeks after that to Memphis, Tennessee. That'll be the uh, fourth and fifth tour stop this season. Then we go to Port Rowan, Canada, the weekend after the Fourth of July. We'll be up there. The end of July, we're in Portland, Connecticut. So north, that's our north, uh, northeast swing. And then after that, we'll be in Utah to wrap up the regular season. The Rockwell Blast. I like, I like Utah. It's a good I grid. Do. I do. We like to, we like to, to make it hot and fast. It is. <laughs> it is. Uh, a and lot of fun. Rowan, I, I, I like that grid. I like how narrow it is. Yeah, and it's a, it's a, uh, elevated tee box, right? Yeah. You gotta love the elevated tee box. Mm-hmm. Hey, the Hoffman, the Hopper, just okay. showed up. How's it going, guys? How we doing? How we doing? Good. We were just talking about you had a torn ACL, MCL, meniscus. You have seven toes on your left foot. You busted your shoulder Three cavity. Three thumbs on my right hand. Don't forget about that. That's yeah. a bad situation. And you got four ears on your left foot. <laughs> I tell you. Is that advantage to speed-wise or disadvantage? 100%. 100% those are called PEDs. Those are performance and anti drugs for sure. Right there. <laughs> As we mentioned, Aaron Hoffman is uh, one of the funniest dudes in the planet and the most relaxed guy in the sport of long drive and probably in the state of Nevada. Yeah. You know, you don't want to say Nevada here. You get in trouble for that. They'll, they'll, they'll it's a bad you. word here. That's a, that's a suspension on YouTube if you call it Nevada. Uh, yeah. And also the F word. Yeah. Yeah. I've said that before. <laughs> don't say that. I, I accidentally said that. We'll get some numbers here in a on second purpose. on this yeah. this last group. Scott Littlefield wanted that last one. Looks like it may be been out of bounds. I, I, tell me what you guys think of Peyton Vanderly. I love this guy on on Instagram. I'm just gonna say you better go look at his Instagram because yeah. this guy is magnificent. He will put some time into his posts too. There's one post where he's swinging and he changes outfits like Dude, 20 has, times. Yeah, he wears a the, tutu in one of them. The amount of time he's he puts into some of his, his Instagram stuff is hilarious. So, and he's he's the uh, he's the kind of guy he is just having fun. Yeah. It's all, he, I think he competes as an amateur, right? Yeah. So he he competes in the amateur division. He competes in the open division as an amateur. Uh, he's getting. He's he's actually been competing re- really well. So for having such a good sense of humor, he just loves the smash drives, which is what keeps people in the sport and gets them started, right? I mean, that's what that's what got me into it. Where where'd you you started with uh, NorCal Long Drive? Is that right? I started actually. I started with ALD down in Southern California, and uh, my dad he was like, "Hey, you just hit a seven iron, two hundred and sixty yards. Maybe you should try something else other than golf." And I was like, <laughs> "All right." A 60-degree seven iron. Yes, 100%. That. And the five toes. Do not for seven toes. Uh, but, yeah, he bought me my first driver, four-degree little crankhead, and went out to Southern California. Took second to a guy who had, a, like, a 52-inch driver. He had to buy a new driver at the World Finals for them because he had a— It was too long. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, damn, so, like, is that a win with an asterisk there or what? But yeah. caught the bug, man. Good good people, good vibes. And Hey, Peyton Vanderly. 358 took that set. Had a boy. It's the Scott beard. Littlefield 352 and West Campo 348. Oh, Unfortunately, no numbers. No numbers, and that's that's a a hole that he's gonna have to dig out of. Will can do it, right? We talked about the numbers, probably about 550. Yep. Right. He's got four sets. He's gonna need to at least win two of those to give himself a shot. Yeah, I said we got Colton Castle here in slot number four or slot number one, and I'll say it because I guess if I'm in the booth, I gotta pick my four guys. You know, I would. I would take Pregnall, Berkshire, Colton Casto, and Reed Russell to be there, we just just because of how high they hit the golf ball. Yeah. You know, and and Greg Nall being almost at a two, well two thirty guy and hitting it straight. I just don't think the grid right now is. I, you know, I know you came in second. I could pick you, but I can't. You know, you're sitting in the booth with me. You know, but I did beat him in North Cal. Uh, just we did. Yeah. If you didn't catch that, just after that <laughs> that month. second place finish, he took second oh, again man. in a two player field. So yeah, I'm Ryan Scripton. That was we rough. Could, we, we could hit at 285 and he'll hit listen. It's because you guys are in my dome. Okay, <laughs> I can't get you out of my head. I've never owned someone so much in one yeah. sport in my entire life. 
I just love seeing Ryan Reese back on the T-Box with me. I should charge rent. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Big Thunder Golf hitting down in Australia. Glad to hear you hitting in the uh, ranks down there. We, you know, we, we talk a little bit about this uh, from time to time about we're growing. Um, we signed with uh, Asia Long Drive for some uh, spots. They're going to send uh, three competitors of the World Championship, and that's, that's exciting news. They're going to host some events in uh, Thailand, China, um, I think maybe, I don't think Singapore, I'm trying to think of the other country, another uh, Asia Pacific country, but it's good news. Sports growing. We've got now, um, we're looking at Mexico, North, uh, North Korea, <laughs> South Korea, <laughs> South Korea, yeah, uh, New Zealand, yeah. Australia. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The, the odds were good. No. And I picked wrong. I picked poorly. Um, Japan, obviously, uh, South Africa, um, Europe, Canada. I mean, it's growing. We're growing and, uh, Filling up events, right? We keep having to expand our events, and uh, that's a, it's exciting. Good things are happening. We're uh, we're working through some problems, some communication challenges. That's probably one of our biggest challenges, communicating uh, really well. So, but we're working on some things. A lot of good things in the works, such as Top Tracer being here this week, yep. uh, doing some testing. They've got some really cool equipment. We were testing it the other night, and uh, the cameras are so sensitive you can see the bugs flying around, like. On the screen, and you hit a ball, and it's boom. See, see the ball. You get one of those fly through. catchers right next to yeah. it. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty cool. I mean, technology's got to be a big part of us moving forward. And it's yeah. nice sitting in the booth here when you have the TrackMan data in slot number four, the iPad in front of you. There's a lot of moving parts, but for us, you know, trying to get an idea to explain it, and I mean, not necessarily elementary terms, but for people that are coming in and don't don't know too much about long drive, to pr- try to simplify it, and the TrackMan really helps us out, but. Uh, in simple terms, the high high ball is the way to go as of right now uh, on this grid because we're not getting too much rollout. As mentioned in March, you could hit your shot. You could hit it high, hit it low, and uh, hit a cut, hit a draw, uh, and um, you know put up good numbers. But right now, the high ball's going. So and, and things for me, like I always talk about Colton, only thing I, I worry about is him you know, keeping it, keeping it in play. Yeah, that guy has a different gas pedal. It, it, I think in this last year, it's been uh, what he's made like a damn near a ten mile an hour increase in in, in ball speed. It seems like oh like yeah, he's just turn on the gas pedal in this last year. Yeah, I think he's at the point where he's he's not trying to swing fast, but he is. A lot of times, you have to work your body to get to that point, get your muscles, you know, into that higher speed zone. Right. And now it's just he's just float he's just floating around in that high speed zone. He um, never comes down so. Thank you, Alex Blouser. Yeah. Blouser. For, Blouser. No, Blouser, Blouser. I like Blouser better. Yeah. I'm an Atlanta Braves guy back in the day, but you can hear my voice now. I uh, did not have my microphone on. So Colton taking that, that last set at 389. Ben Knutson, 371. Andrew Cody, no marks. And then Matthew Love at 347. So leaderboard after round one, we got Berkshire, Casto, Galladay, and Venderly. All taking first place with 200 points. Scott Littlefield, Ben Knudsen, Victor Bour- is it Bourget? Did I say that right? Is it French? Bordel. Bourget. Bourget. No Bordeaux. And then Marc Costello. That's your top eight. We've got a few OB sets. I know in the first group when I hit, um, there were several OB sets. The win in our face, right to left. Uh, what the conditions now? A lot calmer. And uh, but the ground is definitely firming up with the heat, yeah. And it's it's starting to get hot now, even here under the tent in the shade. Or we got Victor here in slot Still four. So like people get vocal. You're looking at a certain launch, 16, 17, 18 would kind of be a launch number that you're you're looking at. Scotty Perriman, uh, tuning in right now. He's hitting here in a little while. Just like yesterday, Jeff Gavin is a plus nine, plus ten kind of guy and does it easily. And uh, angle of attack we're talking about, so it's really easy for him to hit it up in the air. And we mentioned Maurice Allen, yeah, you know, someone that can hit it without forcing it 170, 180, 190 feet with good spin rates. And Kyle, let's 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 talk about Kyle and, and just talk about how good he is at ball striking and being in tune with his body and being able to hit certain numbers. So it's the guys from Good Good Golf and Kyle's with them, and me and the kid Bubby's like, hey. Let's try to catch one of Kyle's drives. And it was probably a 20-mile-per-hour south wind. And when I was living in Dallas, there was a range at Frisco Lakes that was probably 430 yards 
long, and he's like, all right. So we go to Walmart. They they, they get a glove and a helmet for Bubby, and um, we get walkie-talkies and track man, and Kyle hits 94 balls. And once we figured out that he had to hit it about 218 to 220 mile per hour ball speed with it, the height of like 210, 200 to 210 for like 60 balls. He was within like, it, it was ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. And Bubby caught it at 421 yards. Dude dives and catches it. It was unbelievable. But Kyle knew that he had to hit it a certain height and a certain speed at a certain spin rate. And we'll go back to his practice session yesterday. He was working on 2,400 to 2,500 spin at a certain launch, and we're on a live, and he goes, 2,409 2, spin. I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. It, yeah. There is a science oh, yeah. behind this. Well, that, that's because that's not new to him. That's what he and Bobby are practicing all the time. They'll have contests to hit certain spin axis, you know, things like that, certain launch, spin rate. I mean, that's what – and he's a machine when it comes to practicing, too. A lot of people don't – I mean, he'll, he'll hit, you know – I, when I practice, I'm like 80 balls, and that includes my warm-up drives, right? I'm I'm not hitting a lot more than 80 balls in a practice session, but he'll he'll hit like 180, 160, and and for at like three hours, four hours, right? It's it's crazy how good he is, but he's definitely put the time in. And uh, I mean, I'm a little bit older than he is, so for me, a lot of it's more recovery, I think, right now to try and stay you know, fresh and loose. And for him, like he's he's grinding all the time, but he does the same thing. He'll do a ramping session where he'll hit three or four or five days in a row. He's working for an average ball speed at a certain level. That's what a lot of people don't realize too. Like it's the t the practice is a concerted effort, I guess, right? right? Focused effort, and there's a game plan to his practice. If you learn how to practice, then you will be fine in competition, right? That's yeah. the key is learning how to practice. He practices with a purpose. Like he literally has four different phases of a speed session, and. Ironically, he listens to different music during those those no speed kidding. sessions. Yes, he's That's like incredible. he has level one, level two, level three, level four. He'll pull out his forty five inch driver. Once he starts sitting around two sixteen, two seven, two two eighteen, he'll pick it up a little bit more with the forty five inch driver. And when he's sitting at two twenty one, two twenty two, he progresses into a long drive head. And he's like, I want to be one fifty to one fifty one for the next thirty to forty balls. Then I want to be one fifty two to one fifty four. And then he gets to that that fourth fourth phase where he's 155 to like all out and he drinks you know he wants to keep his heart rate up you said and uh, he'll drinks is that what you just said drinks monster yeah, energy drinks he drinks he, monsters yeah, he'll drink like two or three monsters his practice session and my practice <laughs> session it's about a half can of can of dips and about three Coors lights and we're gonna be all right all right you know? we're seeing bigger numbers here scott littlefield 399 george Hegarty 389 victor bogart at 374 and matt love at 356 so uh, we're going to see 420s, 430s, 440s. If we do get a 12, 14 mile per hour south wind, you'll see 450 to 460 yard drives today. Because I do feel like the ground is slightly firmer at about 370, 380. Because Ryan and I went out there yesterday and wasn't really seeing much rollout. It's pretty plush at 330, 340, 350, but it, it looks like it hardens up a little bit. So Will Hogue right now needs to find, find, uh, He's you know, he's struggling a little bit. You can you can see it. Um, trying to find center of the club face sometimes. It, it, a lot of times it just takes one ball right to get set, and they feel like okay, I've got got I can do that again, and then repeat that process. I think Jacob Galladay is only hitting a set and a half, and he has more balls in play than I did in my five sets <laughs> in your four year career. Oh yeah. my I'm god! I tell you right now, he's not kidding. <laughs> guy. It was a rough outing, but it's you know, it's good to see these guys just go, just go. It's good to see the competition. Yeah. Hey, so I think that uh, we get a couple of questions here on the live feed from Instagram, and uh, there is a net. Uh, there's a question about what are the nets that uh, Kyle has been practicing with. I think Bryson practices with these nets. It's a net return. Um, Great dudes, good net. too. Yeah. They're, out of, yeah. they're out of New Jersey. And uh, Brandon, Br out of Jersey. I'm actually going to see those guys here in a couple days, like next next Sunday. Brandon Crawley, great dude. Um, yeah, net return. I mean, that's uh, I stood behind the net. You know, my, I, you know, not have been the smartest thing for me to do. I was like, I'll <laughs> shoot, shoot. It, yeah, it was well, just I mean, it was it was a it was a commercial deal. You know, I got paid millions of dollars to do it, and but yeah, I, that hit net you can hit. I think it's like a two hundred fifty thousand ball guarantee. You know, like yeah, yeah. And uh, so yeah, the net return is a, is a great two hundred and thirty miles an hour probably. Yeah. I mean, yep. that's a durable thing. And that's good to have too. Like, I mean, you don't have to have a you know hundred thousand dollars setup either. Like, have a, a simulation oh, no. room 
you get the net and you know get in a session and and you know is that have the your same track nets at one stop? Yeah. Is that the same nets yeah. at one yeah, stop? Yeah, those are the nets that we oh. use, especially in 2020 with the pandemic. The one stop power shop were limited on you know driving range space, so we had four net returns set up, and guys would warm up and hit into the nets, and they held up every time. So. So right now we're gonna have live scoring in the round of sixteen. We want to keep the iPads charged and and tablets and and uh, not overheat. But we'll be able to see in live time TrackMan data here in the booth, and then the live scoring for the people that are joining in. We'll be live six p.m. Eastern Standard Time, three p.m. West Coast time. Ryan, yeah. he's back. You'll be in the final sixteen. I'll be I talking will. About you. That's right. I'll be swinging out of my shoes. I cannot Party. wait to watch this. <laughs> Me madness. You know, if I could talk, we'll get some numbers here for this last group, and then I'll talk a little bit about the uh, live scoring. But Galladay takes it 378. Dude, Drew Cody 375. Will Hogue with a ball in at 365, and then the ghost player uh, came up short. No balls in play. Strange. Yeah. The so, ghost player hasn't hit a ball in play all year. Struggling. Yep. At least struggling. he's consistent. Most consistent <laughs> yeah. long drive he on is. the planet. Yeah. Um, so Jacob Galladay's two wins. That's big when your first two sets. Set you up. Now you're link. Now you're thinking. He's not thinking this because he is a ball and play guy. Every time he doesn't. I don't know if I've ever seen him go out of bounds, but uh, Galladay is setting so himself fast. up good. Yeah, Costello here in slot three. West Campo out of uh, Ontario, Canada. So Wes was here the other night. We were setting up lights, and he he was uh, checking out the tee box, and he says, "You guys need some help with this." Not. I'd never set these commercial lights up before, right? He whips. Up, he jumps over the barricades and. Whip, whips open some panel and starts turning it on and starts raising the lights up like he was i was like wes we're so it's just so fortunate that you're here helping us out because it had taken us and he does time. all the electrical for the cn tower and the rogers center is that what he does no uh, i have no uh, idea he, I made but, that. but like he's an iron worker i think he's an he amateur said. electrician yeah. but he just started in long drive like six months ago he just started practicing did an indoor event with uh, mike zuloff up in uh, ontario or north of toronto and and just loved it. So, so let's uh, talk just a second here about the live scoring because I feel like it's one of the key components to our our production that we're trying to do, trying to master. It actually takes uh, a, a lot of coordination to do it. Um, we love it. We when the, when the live scoring is up, the audience here loves it. The audience watching from home or wherever you're at on the YouTube feed loves it. Um, so we want to try and integrate it into all of our events. But there's a lot of manpower and coordination that goes into it to make it effective. Otherwise, sometimes it slows the competition down. And so we want to try and avoid that. So we're trying to get to the point where we can master uh, that efficiently. Uh, we should have it set up tonight uh, for the top 16 and then the final eight, four, and two. And so stay tuned uh, at that. Come back. Make sure you watch that. We'll have the live scoring up. We did it last night here with the ladies division under the lights. We are testing lights. Uh, we're trying to we're trying to do what we can to increase the number of people in attendance for the world championship, and really we're limited in daylight. So we're gonna, if we're going to have to you know increase some of the field size, we're going to have to go to you know under the lights, which is great. I loved it. Oh man, that it was beautiful. Better than under the lights. Yeah, oh, it makes yeah. my golf ball look like it went way further than it did. Mm -hmm. and the ladies' competition was great. Uh, you know, so Phyllis won. I mean, she looked she, amazing. She's She's good every right time. She left off. Yeah. All right, we'll get some numbers here in a second. But um, talking more about the broadcast, you know, we want to find that shot in the grid. We're working to do that. That's actually very technical and expensive. So lights, shot on the grid, tracer, uh, capturing data, and be able to post it on the production in, in, you know, real time is important to us too. So there's a lot of things that we're trying to do, and uh, we're working towards that. So stay patient with us. We're, we're going to keep growing. Uh, we're a fledgling organization right now, but we're we're on the move up. We need more so. cowbell. We need cowbell. We need we more cowbell. We definitely need cowbell. Yeah, so. Absolutely. I was told to turn my volume down on the range by uh, good old Mr. Peterson. He said <laughs> it's going to be a little too much. We got too many live cameras for your mouth. So oh. I've been – actually went to the bathroom and ate, ate two bars of soap. So I just uh, came <laughs> back and we'll be all right, you know. <laughs> what, what What is it on the Christmas story, the one that – it's a life boy or something like that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Had two life boys and man, really trying to uh, think before I act, and it, that really hurts my head sometimes. Yeah. So, right. <laughs> All right. So we got two world championship or champions on the tee box right now: Reese Allen, Kyle Berkshire. And I say Kyle, 
cruising at 409 in his first set. He looks awesome. Really does. He is uh he's the best in the business for a reason. And uh and he said we talk about his practice. It's just he practices with a purpose and he is always prepared. I want to give a shout out to old Mr. Benjamin Knutson over there in slot one. He's from Northern California. And I know that Kyle has a gas pedal, but this kid hits a ball seriously. About the 210 to 220 yard, 20 foot mark. And uh, we'll see if that could pay off for him. Here yeah, I, yeah, I watched him on the rain. He hits the ball high. Yeah. Super high. I noticed he dumped the Crocs, though. He used I to wear Crocs. Why. He would throw them in sport mode. Those things are Ferraris would, for him. Yeah. He's a lot of fun. I love his Instagram stuff, too. So Colton went OB that last oh. set. There was, some, there was an 84 and 83. We're going to take a peek at uh, that last set. Tyga, back on the board here at 200 points, wins it at 384. Mark Costello going back-to-back -back second places with 383. Wes Campo at 343, and Colton Casto at zero. Kyle likes it. I'd like this, uh, I'd like this, um, this box from Maurice, too. Yeah, what? I think slot number four works works well for him. What uh, he's hitting exotics? Is that what he um, driver he hits? He's got a rev shaft. He's it looks got, like. actually, I believe he's hitting a rev driver as well. Okay. Yep. He had he was hitting the Cobra and the rev, so he's using a rev shaft. I know Joe Miller uses that shaft. Phyllis Melody won with that shaft last night as well. Yeah, a lot That's of close. Uh, we see a lot of the uh, players coming over from the Asia Pacific area using rev. A lot of Patterson kinetic shafts mm. here in the States. Yep. Then we can say it. Maurice is best dressed. He wins best dressed in this group. Well, it's hard to compete. He I mean, can't he's, compete. I mean, he's, everything matches. He has a lion's head for a belt buckle. That's okay, awesome. And it's not belt a buckle. small lion's head either. Nah, he's the belt the, buckle's bigger than my waistline. Holy shit. Yeah. Yeah. Shoot, shoot. Hey, you know That's here. okay. That, that one doesn't get, that doesn't know, get blocked I mean, out on yeah, Comedy yeah, Central. Yeah, and yeah, other thing. I mean... It, it's Holy it's eleven thirty. It's eleven o'clock somewhere Holy at. Poop. Uh, there we go. Poop. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Holy poop! <laughs> I'm glad it wasn't the other one. My goodness. We always say it's for the kids. Yeah, yeah it it's is for, for the, the kids. kids. Bless their hearts. <laughs> it's a Sunday, so you're forgiven. Way to jump on that as fast yeah. as you could. Like yeah, uh, it, 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 Larry the Cable Guy. Lord, I apologize for them there, and please be with the starving pygmies down in New Guinea. Amen. <laughs> oh, I tell you. Gindy Wabin, hello. We gotta, we gotta try and keep it clean. That's all I'm saying. Oh man, I was trying my hardest. Oh, with ten minutes right how there. How funny is this? Wendy Gavin, uh, she goes. Costello, so glad he's back. Memories of Atlantic City. They hit fifty-four golf balls until they finally hit one in play. It was the worst conditions in the history of life. It was like ninety mile per hour crosswinds to hit it on the grid was like almost impossible. And it was a narrow grid too. <laughs> I remember it was that. a one yard wide grid. It, <laughs> it was it was narrow. It but, took fifty four balls but, for them to but finally the, win and play. But the best part about it was is the, the rain. It the, got delayed. Yeah, it wasn't live on yeah, television. It wasn't live on television. If it was live on tele television, it would have been an all out collapse of long drive. <laughs> but what happened what happened was they kept hitting sets and neither of them would hit one in play. And then um, when they came back live on the broadcast, they showed every one of the hits. They just fast forwarded it. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> it oh my like, god! <laughs> so in a matter of like forty-five seconds, you saw every swing that was hit. But when we were in the audience, it was painful. It like it was it, it was took an hour just to get through the you know yeah, the playoff. <laughs> it was like if you were in crypto the other day oh, and you god, were watching oh it just dive and dive and dive and dive. And then at the end, you're like, it's completely over. But then it bounced back. So was Atlantic City? Was that the one that was on the fairway? Was that the golf hole that it was yep. on? Yeah, no. yeah, it was on a hole. It, it was, was it was the the year before. Well, it was 2018. Yeah, because 19, it was really really windy, and I think Tim Burke ended up winning with like a 290 ball, like the actual final yeah. finals. Goodness. He just had to hit one and play. In that same year, didn't he go 473? Or which no, or, which yeah. nobody likes, right? Nobody wants to to be in that situation. Even spectators, where you're just wanting a guy to put a ball in play to win, nobody wants that, right? Yeah, yeah. So. those are tough, tough, tough conditions. All right, so we're waiting for an update here. You know, Berkshire yelled at his first ball, or said "ooh," which more than likely yeah, will be the biggest yell you'll have. Knudsen going back to back. He goes from slot one over here to slot four in the featured T slot. Like how he's wearing his PLDA T-shirt from the Rockwell Blast. Yeah. All right, here we go. All right. Knudsen with a 391. All right, Berkshire went 400. Oh, wrong set. Three, uh, 400. Peyton Vanderlee, 388. And Maurice Allen, 382. So that's the end of round two. Let's check out the leaderboard now. 
KB on top with uh, Jacob Galladay, both at 400 points. Scott Littlefield, 300. Peyton Vanderlee, 250. And then we got a four-way tie uh, for five through eighth place. Colton Casto, Ben Knutson, Taiga Tazawa, Mark Costello, all rounding out the top eight with 200 points. All right, so like I said, there, there might be a log jam at fifth and sixth. They're going to take five guys, and then the sixth man will be in a uh, three three person playoff um, wild card for the round of 16. Good and everybody here. tuning in, Ryan Reesback has made officially made the final 16. I you sound surprised. No, I'm not. You came here. in second. You won on here. I mean, <laughs> I'm bragging for you. You're oh, welcome. Man. I think it's the beard. You look great. It's fully grown in. You look like a real boy now. I'm, you know? I'm going to go handlebar mustache for uh, Denver. You guys if be ready. You Colorado, it. Rocky Mountain High. Dude, I'll, I'll grow out my catfish just for that. I got three whiskers on each side of my right lip, my right and left lip. You know, if you haven't signed up yet for the, the event in Denver, the, let me tell you, Greg Johnson with Bigfoot Turf. He owns Bigfoot Turf. That's a facility, he, isn't it? It is awesome. It's a it's a sod farm. It's out kind of in the country, LaSalle, Colorado, just just kind of northeast of Denver, uh, close to Greeley. And this guy wants to see 500 yard drives well, at his facility. He he. Uh, talk to the man above and tell him to turn up yeah. the wind a couple notches, and he'll just go. It's a beautiful yeah. backdrop. The 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 you're gonna hit east to west. The mountains are in the, the Rocky Mountains are in the was, background. It was bad. It was it's, so awesome. It's a year. slight downhill, so you're not quite elevated, but there's a slight gradual. And the uh, wind is. It, I don't know if the wind predominantly comes out of the east in, in Denver. I mean, I've done probably 50 events there, and very rarely you'll get an east wind. East. Very, very rarely. You normally get it off the mountains. Mm -hmm. But right if over. by chance you get that east wind, yeah. Yeah, yeah, could be. As Art would say, good night, nurse. But yeah. the, in 2017, that was insane. I mean, those were the best conditions you could ever imagine. Okay. It was more of like so a southwest tell me about, wind. Tell me about that. Which event are you talking about? The one, the one where you lost. <laughs> the one where I failed to put a ball in play. Maurice, Maurice got you. He did. He beat you by 436 36 yards. yards. Yeah. That's right. And my shortest ball in play, I think, that day was 480. Yeah. I, oh, yeah. my. Well, not, JJ, what did JJ uh, go last year? They, it was four sixty something last year. Yeah, it was good. It, we had left to right, right to left conditions. Mm -hmm. In car. I mean, it's it's fantastic. The air is high, or the air is high. Yeah. The, the air is thin. Your high elevation. Uh, the water is uh, wet out there. The water is wet. The grass is green. He uh, so I'm gonna tell you, Greg Johnson. This guy, he he cuts it tight. He he rolls it. He top dresses it. I mean, he cut it out. He won't sell that section of the sod farm. Because we're using it, so he cuts the area all around, and we have a grid. If you go to U or Google Earth, and you pull up Bigfoot Turf Sod Farm, no kidding. The it just so happens that the satellite pictures they picked took it it already was when up? we did the event last year. Oh. So we right. have a Joseph Miller in the house. Is that the Joseph Miller who's a two-time world champion, Joseph Miller? If so, we'll see if he can Joseph, respond. Joseph, hello, Nick Kiefer. Nick miss Kiefer. you, buddy. We're, we do miss you, buddy. If I weighed as much as uh, Mr. Joe's Miller's uh, right arm, I swear I might have a chance in this division out here. You know, is just you know Joe's a dad time. now, so he's probably got uh, muffin top you like think, me. Yeah, right. He, yeah, 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 that yeah, happens to you. He's he's you like Stephen Coyce. He's got four percent body fat. Guy should yeah, be I, a professional chef. He should have his own cooking show. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> he actually might eat more steak than I do, and I eat five days yeah. a week. He eats a lot. He does. We, Big red so meat guy. When we, I love it, man. You got to feed the CEO. Yeah, when we were in off. Portugal, New York strips. They they had this uh, right next to our hotel. They had this. Uh, oh, where they where they have all the boats? What am, am I called a the, marina? Uh, yeah, marina. And there was a whole path around the marina. And there were shops and restaurants and everything. And we we're we we're walking around the marina and we stopped to eat. And he gets two entrees. And we we get up, we start walking down. The, that sounds like a we, magnificent we, time. We turn we turn around, and he's buying more food. That sounds and like me. And we go a little further down, and we stop, and he's we're getting gelato, and he's getting gelato. Like it was like he everywhere we went, he was boy specials, he Ryan. was eating. So I, I firmly believe. I mean, he, I does, he says he's eating. ripped. I believe it. I know he's stronger than Knox. I know that. He's as strong as man, maybe not as strong as Giovanni Lechadores. Man, that kid is stacked. Oh, I got Sam strong. Judah. I tell, I Glad to see you on here, Sam. This Sam, might like be said, the commentary. He's already. <laughs> I know. Sam, Sam Judah shows up for to hang out with buddies 
Where wasn't he hanging out with Bryson or something? Yeah. And he's uh oh I can hit a two twenty. <laughs> Goes two eighteen like his first practice yeah. session. Rumor has it he went two twenty three, two twenty four not too long ago. Uh, the only two twenty I ever talk about is feet in the air. If you need a Land Rover, you call Sam Judah. Okay. All right. If you ever need an air conditioner down in South Florida, you give my daddy a call, Bob Bradley, at Bradley Heating and Air Conditioning, keeping the Palm Beach at school since 1980, from regular service to maintenance to full system replacements. They do it all. They do it all. They have certified journeyman technician as well. They're not getting the peace workers out there getting paid per per, per job. I wish they could deal. see Holy your face I right, tell you right now. now. I'll <laughs> never forget. We were doing an ESPN deal, and I was like, can we just do the Ricky Bobby? If you don't buy an air conditioner from my daddy, then... God bless America. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I was going to say. You know? <laughs> yeah. Shout out to Bob Bradley, big old Bob Bradley. I said, that, that might He's not big at all. Talladega Nights. Uh, if you don't like <laughs> Dick Red, then you know the end of that one. How you doing? All right, so we got Maurice Allen in slot number one, Colton Cowes doing three. Scott Littlefield in four. Yeah, That's, Littlefield's looking good, too. Yeah. That last set, I don't think we called numbers back on that. Ben Knutson wins it at 382, Will Hogue 379, and Marcus Sell 378. Very tight group. Unfortunately, Victor Bourget... Did not put a ball in play, so that's that's a killer for him. Mr. Littlefield, did he uh, qualify yesterday for the world, world final? He did. He did. What a stud! Yep. You can follow him at I think it's Longish Driver. <laughs> okay. On like Instagram, and his wife is married to Long Drive. Yeah. yeah, she's funny. She posts some funny stuff too. I like it. Uh, Making what, fun of what Long Drive wives go through. Yeah. Yep. So this is a big set for Maurice and and for for Colton. It just it, a win is is premium right now. Um, we talked about it being five fifty, and them not having a hitter. They have a ghost hitter that never hits one in play. It might bump up the average to two to like five seventy five to be on that bubble. Yeah, with a lot of OB sets that first group. There was a lot of OB space. sets in the in the in the the round before the round of sixteen yeah. before. All right, we'll get some numbers on this group here. Colton, not sure. He's kind of got a smile, like maybe you got a good one. Mm -hmm. uh, Scott maybe. just called himself the S word. Scott. Yeah. Scott. Scott. <laughs> dang, you, dang you, Scott. So here we go. We got the battle of the long hair. Uh, I'm not going to call him freaks because I love Mr. Jacob Galloway. Honestly, yeah. I want to do a, dud. a de facto poll here. Or impromptu poll on the uh, live feed. What are your What are your feelings about technology on the T box? T box. T box. T box here. We got Kyle. Kyle has got his uh, track man. We saw Scott Littlefield had his uh, GC quad. What are your feelings on that? Go ahead and post it in the chat. Maurice Allen with a 382. Colton Casto 406. He's yeah. going to take it. And Scott Littlefield, 381. That's the one so. thing that scares me about Colton. That's it. Because at the end of the day, that dude is so fast. And, and he, he centers, he centers it. And he, and he is it's in play. He's tight. Yeah. Because you, know? you have to be on, on, you know, with that shaft. If he's hitting a D10. Yeah. And we did talk about that yesterday with, with um, Kanani Lodge. Kind of surprised that, like, you know, she ended up going with the 46-inch shaft pretty much the whole time and cruised through it. And then she ended up going to the 48-inch shaft and, that's a big difference going from one a forty six inch shaft to a forty eight inch shaft, but like a CPM that's a two seventy compared to a two forty. And now we sound, you know, technical like we know what we're talking about, yeah. but uh, a little bit different of a setup. But uh, yeah, I told I told her I was calling balls for her last night. I I told her I said you look like you're just cruising. Mm -hmm. Why let's step on it. Let's yeah, you know, let's see what you got here. And then she did, and went what three forty something or what? What was it? Uh yeah, I think the mark was three three thirty nine was the longest from Kanani, and then uh, Billis was went three forty five. Yeah, forty five. My goodness. So, so for Kyle right now, he's staying in a groove. I mean, he he's probably two twenty two, two twenty three right now. I, I mean, if eyeball test, he's not going full throttle, but just looks completely in control right now. Yeah. And Jacob Galladay, this grid just sets up perfect for him. He's a guy that can hit a high low. I mean, he's very uh, versatile. Uh, being a oh, he's a baseball guy as well, but really, really good golf swing, and a good golfer. Great, yeah, pretty Ooh, good. Kyle golfer. stepped he's, on the gas there. Jacob is just, I think, one of the purest ball strikers there are. Honestly, he's uh, it, it's not too often that Jacob misses. All right, so we got a couple of responses here from our our poll here. Kyle Manning. Uh, it says it doesn't make the ball go any farther and doesn't affect your swing or anyone else's. So who cares? And Mitch, Mitchell Dobbin, uh, 
the competing argument, launch monitors on the T-Box should not be allowed. You should have to make adjustments on your own. How you doing? I don't I, uh, necessarily. I don't disagree. Like, for me, like, I, I could... I don't really care, you know, I've hit so many golf balls and I'm not fast enough that it doesn't even matter. But like, I know if I hit it in the center of the face or not and kind of have an idea, like if you come out and watch these guys hit, they get feedback right away of what's working and what's not working. And and some of the times, like I said, for me, like I know that Kyle's looking at, at spin rates, like he's looking at spin rate and, 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 and ball speed. So, um, I mean, you can make adjustments with the launch monitor and people talk more about it being alignment i mean there's 85 t's on the t box in front of jacob right now he yeah. can just pick a t and make that in the line and, and our t dividers are straight lines yeah right yeah. so i don't agree with the uh the alignment i mean yeah whatever if you want to think of it as an alignment tool if you if you use it as that we're practicing right whatever i don't think it's an alignment tool but a an adjustment i think you can make an adjustment but also at the same time uh as bobby said i'm not one of the faster guys so if I center it up, I know what the center of the face feels like, and I'm trying to hit a certain zone in the air. It's not really See, and I, I, my, my opinion is I think more data is good, and you can, you can gather all the data you want. You still have to put the club the on the ball, right? The same, yeah. I think data is going to help produce better hitting, better mm -hmm. competition down the road, and I think there's people that, that are into that information yeah. that, that will help grow the sport. So. Um, whether you, I mean, if I put one on the tee box, I'm going to start trying to swing as oh, hard swing. as I can, yeah. and it's worse for me. So I purposefully don't put one uh, on the tee box with me. Is that, you need to learn sign language. Landon Gentry, Landon Gentry, Landon Gentry's trying to sign language. Who's that, Jay? Galladay, or you only speak one language? Huh? Gal. Is that cow? You got six balled. Okay, so uh, Galladay looks like he got might have got six balled here. Let go. Campo, right, the Berkshire good. at 406 and Jacob Galladay at 395. I mean, you got two guys that are that are really good golfers in, in Berkshire and Galladay. And Galladay ended up making the semifinal last time. This grid sets up perfect for him. He's never going to miss the grid. Yeah. And uh, he can hit it high, hit it low. He, he's uh, kind of like a Justin James, but maybe 10 miles per hour slower in ball speed. I mean, really, truly. Yeah, I, mean, I mean, JJ JJ is, you know, we're missing him today. But Kai, uh, uh, Jacob is just a really 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 good hitter and for me like if he's in a double elimination format someone like him a justin moose a brandon flynn you're gonna see those guys you know in final aids all day every day yeah i mean honestly jacob is uh one of the guys that i try to hit after really i try to look at this guy and, and pick at his brain because he is such a pure striker and he doesn't depend on the speed he, he depends on that type of uh that zone in the air that he's i see a zone just hit the center of the face and yep. go for it let your ball do the work out. Well, Kyle Kyle ends up taking the set, so he's got 600 points. Galladay's at 500, and yeah, you know, Galladay just needs to hit a couple oh, balls. Play Tiger, getting go, after it. Tiger, go baby. As he says, from Japan. Good shot. Give a shout out to all the boys at Country Club adjacent. Griff Pippen. That was probably the greatest interview in the history of golf, and let alone in the in the sport of any sport. My God, that was hilarious. That was so funny. And, and testament to to taiga would just be it's got a good vibe good personality he flows with it and oh we, we were we were sitting at dinner last night just laughing i mean just he's just a funny dude yeah Great all guy. the japanese players are more animated on the t-box yeah. Like we we got to figure that out on Should our I, side. Like okay. like Martin well, is great Martin. on the T-box, right? But I mean like I don't know us America, I mean my experience from getting boisterous on the T-box is not good. No, I yelled I at a ball by two freaking yards then every I, time, yeah, man. It's fourth place yeah. and I'm just like <laughs> Zach well, Adams back. is our best bet. Zach yeah. Adams is our best bet in the, oh, in the man, state. That guy has got some flow to him. I love Jay Z's in the house. Ladies and gentlemen, this six-time world champion, the GOAT Jason Zubak has entered the chat room. Jay Z, thanks for coming in. Also, if I could have a waistline the size of his left bicep, we would be all right. I'm telling you, <laughs> my God. Mitch, I, I'm uh, Mitch responded here. Gathering and looking at it afterwards is one thing. Having instant feedback is another. And I see that perspective yeah. too, right? Like, yeah. it's it's you should be a man on an island out there mm -hmm. or a woman, right. and uh, doing your thing right on your own. So I, I see both. I would love to see all the information we can on the broadcast for the audience. Uh, yeah. I think that helps. You know drive spectators and viewership bry roberts is in the house yeah i'm looking forward if i do go out to port roan to see bry because he's he's a guy that's going to be you know i say a 215 guy as well now the first time i got to see bry we were out at um out in london at at the uh not the shire we were at uh brockett hall and bry hits a great great ball watched him hit in china as well and and um 
I said one of the best hitters on the planet that no one really has seen. You know, no one's seen him hit in the States. He hasn't hit in the States yet. So hopefully we'll get to see Bry here, you know, at the World Championships, but we're definitely going to get to see him in Port Rowan. I, I know that uh, watching his Instagram videos, that kid, that dude, he is not afraid to beat the white off of a golf ball. He is, he swings damn hard. and uh, He's got a really good swing. Yeah, yeah. very fundamentally sound. Yep. Yeah, so we'll see James Tate come back, Bry Roberts, Jordan Brooks, Emil Rosberg. I guess Jordan and Emil ended up making the semifinals at the World Championships in 2019. So I'll have a chance to finish in the top 105 at the World Finals. Yeah. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I do too. <laughs> I'll come in the top 100, potentially. I'll hit my five sets and, uh, you know, whatever, and walk yeah. off and say how slow I am and yeah. all that good stuff. That's awesome. So once again... We have three groups of hitters, supposed to have 16 guys. Unfortunately, um, one of the gentlemen, Rocco, has been in the hospital. Um, the, the past it, yeah, Rocco Gondek? He's, he's been in, he, yeah, he flew into Vegas with... He with, wins best dressed every time he shows up. Yeah, he, uh, hopefully he's doing well. Um, but he's yeah. been in the hospital in Vegas with uh, AFib. Is they, I think that's what they said it was. Well, our prayers go out to him and yeah. everybody involved yeah. in that. Uh, so um, it, we have 46 competitors today. And what they, they've done, just because of time, is they're taking five guys in each set, and then they're having one wild card in each group, and one out of the three guys will make it in to the final 16. Let's get these numbers on this last group. George Haggerty taking it 387. Taiga Tazawa 380. Peyton Vanderlee 361. And Drew Cody rounding out at 353. So that's the end of that set. Three, we're three sets deep, two more to go. The leaderboard right now. Berkshire, the only player with three wins at 600 points. Galladay, 500. Casto and Knutson at 400. And then Colt, uh, excuse me, Scott Littlefield, 350 points. George Haggerty, 325. With win that, winning that last set for George is pretty big. So It is. I mean, wins are a premium, and it doesn't take a rocket scientist yeah. to know that. But um, you know, Berkshire is in. He, you'll see him. Galladay has to hit two bunts the next two sets to be in. Um, and, and there there might potentially be a logjam just because of the OB balls. You got Mark Costello with two sets to go that could potentially take a win in the second, and then he'll be at 550 points. Uh, Maurice Allen is at 175, so Maurice is going to have to more than likely go win-win uh, in order to get in um, uh, at, at 575 points. Yeah, and the you know he can do it. The way the seating shakes out is uh, we primarily base your position to start the competition on your PLDA performance and points. So with this being Maurice's first event in competition with PLDA the last three years, he comes in as if he's almost never competed before because the points he does have are, are secondary or tertiary to the PLDA points. So he's going to go up maybe against some competitors that not, aren't quite as competitive, or they may be in a similar situation to him, like Mark Costello, for example. Those two might be in the same group, in the end, and I can take a look here. Yeah, because uh, uh, Maurice is already matched up against Kyle. Yeah. So okay. So in the last set, you're going to see like Mark Costello is going to go up against Matthew Love and Peyton Vanderley, and then the second group will be Maurice Allen, Wes Campo, Drew Cody, Victor Bourget is a, is a is solid competitor as well, and Drew Cody has some pop. Um, so he's he may have some pretty good competition right there, but. In that last group, he's he's definitely probably gonna have to win. Definitely, probably. Yeah, yeah I think he's yeah, gonna have Maurice to win. Has to go next win, two. win. He's gonna have to so, go win win to get in, because that'll put him at five seventy five. So if he's if he's got a shot, that's what it's gonna be. Yeah. So that'd be nice to get Maurice in the booth too. I mean, Maurice has uh, has been a personality uh, for the last ten years in the sport, and you know, I, I I've said it multiple times in two thousand seventeen when the Golf Channel brought us on. I always said I'm like I hope Maurice wins every one of these tournaments besides World Championships because I want to win, but. It's just uh, his energy, and yeah, you know, I said the the Ric Flair was phenomenal. Sorry, Ryan, you know, on, on that one, but I feel like just, I gave birth to an animal there. <laughs> <laughs> but no, nah, Maurice, is, Maurice is, is 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 like I said, competed all over the world, and uh, you know when he won the world yeah. championships in 2018, you know, donated a percentage of his winnings to you know his high school to help out kids in need, and and you know he's raised a lot of money for scholarships and has been extremely philanthropic. And, you know, like I said, this sport is giving us a lot, you know, like for us being baseball guys, it gave us something to compete on a world championship stage. And, and um, you know, oh, did really well when he got on the golf channel and, and, you know, brought a lot more eyeballs that, that weren't necessarily in golf, you know, and Instagram has given us a great platform to showcase, you know, our talents, you know, especially, you know, with me with the lawn drivers page, 
granted I've taken a different direction, you know, and, and the posts all the time. I'm not posting a bunch of lawn drive videos, but well, because it's boring now. Well, <laughs> it's not boring. But <laughs> to see a golf ball go straight. Someone wants you know? to see Cassandra Meyer hit a drive I, yeah, instead yeah, of you, Aaron. You know, I know I'm I know I'm good looking, not but. <laughs> uh, yeah, different different attributes. Well, <laughs> yeah, people would rather, you know, I mean, let's call a spade a spade, right? People would rather see some attractive lady swinging than an ugly it. guy like this me. You know, why, uh, Aaron's got four thumbs on his right hand. Nobody wants to see that. It's it's weird. It's a conversation starter. It, it, but aside from that, gets me a free so, drink every yeah. once in a while. They're like, Absolutely. let me see you grab that but, drink with this hand over here. Yeah. So they'll let me do but that. The, but. but this is this is where I the w as a person who does long drive. Right. You get it. You understand what it's like to be on the tee box and compete and giving giving it your all. And when you connect with the drive, right, oh. it, it is awesome. So if you're out there and you're thinking, yeah, you know, I can't sit there and watch guys swing. Right. You know, just ball after ball after ball. It's not. But once you experience and that's what we're trying to do, we're trying to bring long drive to the masses because people love it. It's the most fun part of golf, in my opinion. Right. I, I think so, too. I mean, mind you, this is a guy who quit playing baseball at the age of 10 because I got a game ball finally four years after starting T-ball because I couldn't hit a damn ball. So I was stopped playing baseball. And here we are doing long drive fast hands. If you got fast hands or the thought of having fast hands, um, get out here, dude. It's, a, it's an experience that um, you'll and you never get to regret. Ryan Riesbeck, living legend. I, are you kidding me? Just yeah. look at the guy. I get to sit next to him right now. Colton Casto, longest ball of the day as of right now. I reckon. Nope. Second longest ball of the day. At 408. So Colton goes OB in set number two, but runs the table, wins set one, set three, set four. He's at 600. You'll see him in. Like I said, I, I feel like it's going to be Greg Nall, Berkshire, Colton Casto, Reed Russell. They're uh, just, just because of the win conditions. Um, they hit the ball really high. They don't have to force it. If you and, had to um, put money on a crafty veteran, though, who would, I mean, like one of them slips through, who's going to, who's that going to uh, be? Mark Costello. Oh, got him. That was a <laughs> shot to the chest right there, I tell you. Ryan, no, Ryan, he's got to get there first, okay? He's got to <laughs> he, get in the top 60. He first. baited that hook so good. Oh, and man. Right by it. Absolutely. Yeah. You were going to be like, I'm staying with Ryan Gregnall. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's exactly what I was going to do to you. Yeah. Um, yeah. What, what's funny, the first, fi first time I met Gregnall, I didn't know he'd been competing already like for, for yeah. years. Yeah. I was like, hey, are you new? And he's like, actually, no. Uh -huh. No, we roomed in 2009 yeah. at the World Championships. Yeah, we stayed at the condos. All right, so, yeah, Colton Casto ends up taking that set. Galladay at 391. So it looks like Galladay's in. He's at 600. Colton's at 600. Berkshire's at 600. And then Benjamin Knutson still has a set to go. He's at 400 points. It's going to get it's gonna get thick quick here. Uh, I think if Tyga wins this set, he'll have 600 points as well. He screamed out one earlier. Let's hold on, see. where's Ty at? No, Tyga's at 300. So when we'll get him at 500, he, but he's going up against Will, Will Hogan, Marie yard. Salen. Will went yard down the right line. I here. think this Will's starting ball. to get, get the feel for it here. Yep. That was new. So Will was the best one. I just, Will's a guy that's a 220 guy as well. So. Good ball. Good ball, Will. I talked to Will a little earlier. He's been uh, doing a, a, a program at work with the fire department. He's trying to work his way up. Uh, up the ladder, pun intended, yeah. but All he's fun. he's been, you know, for the last couple of years, just really been putting a lot of time in at work and not not practicing as much as he'd want, really not doing any gym. And he looks like he's in phenomenal shape still. But yeah, he always is in great know. shape. But, I told uh, him if there was a fire out there at about 400 yards, if you could put it out with that blue ball, yeah. I don't know if he did it or not. Pound for pound is the strongest dude here. Not even, yeah. I mean, it's he is so, so strong. As they say, country strong. He is. Uh, he definitely is. So. Being 215 pounds and bench pressing like 400s, that's kind of impressive. Outrageous. That's very <laughs> aggressive. That's aggressive yeah. as heck. You know what? I, I can't even squat the bar. Is is Jeff Brumley here today? Because Jeff Brumley is so, is freakishly strong, too. I did a push-up. Yeah. I broke out in hives. I swear. It was like two weeks ago. If Giovanni, <laughs> if Giovanni was here and Joe Miller... We should we should bring out a squat rack. Giovanni, he posted a video, I guess, right Giovanni after right Joe. Squ yeah. He did uh, squats of some weight. I guess Giovanni posted a video about a day or two later, whatever it was, of him bench pressing that weight. Oh yeah. I mean, the so dude, I, he's a four by four. That kid. Yeah, yeah. I, I'll tell you a funny story. I when I was in college, my sister in law was playing softball in college at another university, and I I can't remember if it was like Christmas break or something. I was talking about my 
my squats, right? And I, I, I squatted, my max was like 405, and I think she squatted 415. <laughs> Oh my God! I, she was a catcher though, right? So she was used to. She was always. She was always yeah. in the squat. Yeah, and I was. Uh, I was like, oh, right here just to try to maybe I'm not nearly as strong as I thought I was. So, so shout out to my sister-in-law Amanda Pierce in Newcastle, California. That's right. Okay, yeah. California. They're probably swimming in the pool today. It's yeah, a hundred. Get a nice Christmas gift now. Yeah, you know, yeah. she's great. I, Four hundred uh, trillion. We love. Luna. We love visiting the family in uh, NorCal up there, and you can stop by uh, Hagen Oaks. Thursday night, smash some drives with the fellas. Tell you, North Carolina long drive. Yeah, you get about three or four pros out there, a couple amateur guys. Uh, there's some high guys. school kids that were just Man, killing it, dude. There's there's some. Who's the, who's the big guy? What's his? Uh, I forgot what the gentleman's name is, but he is 16 years old. He was producing 180 ball speed. He's like six three, had to be like the two two twenty two forty weight. Big kid. Maurice Allen ended up taking that last set, 387. Tyga, 385. So Maurice has to go win-win. He he knows it, too. I think that'll put him at 575. Yeah. So he's got to go win-win, which he is. He's he totally capable of doing it. Yeah. He's turning up the volume. No, nah, Maurice, like Maurice looked good on the range. He really did. Like you said, he mentioned he broke five bones in his left hand. Oh, man. And um, it was the first time we've seen him and Costello since 2019. And George Hegarty in slot number four really likes Hegarty in slot four. He, it's a nice, big, high draw. He's swinging the 45-incher, ain't he? He's, yeah. He, he doesn't go for the long driver. He doesn't go. Yeah, he, he's he's got a great, great swing. Uh, him and I were on the same flight over from Miami to here. That was fun, sitting on the, <laughs> Giovanni, on the runway for like two hours. Giovanni oh. says Jeff Brumley is stronger than all of us on the bench for sure. Oh, my God. Pound is, for pound, though. I'm saying pound yeah, for pound. Will yeah. Hogue at 215. Yeah, Je I mean, Jeff's, Jeff's like 6'3", six, 6'4". Six, he's not a short guy. But yeah, you, you look at Jeff, and he's very quiet, you know, personality. Six, three, I'm I weigh 175. Guy. How you yeah. doing? Yeah. Soaking wet. Yeah. 185. Yeah, I love yeah, it. Uh, you mentioned something earlier about Maurice um, mm -hmm. when he won the Mile High event. And how it brought a different audience or crowd to yes. to Long Drive, and I, I think that my opinion is we're very accepting of all groups of people <sighs> in Long Drive, and so there, <laughs> I mean golf golf has traditionally been like you know the, the high high uh, income demographic, high class. To, it's, yeah, it's real. Well, it's just the it's Instagram right. crowd. There's yeah. a, there's so many people that play golf that they can't even break a hundred. You know, like right. so for me, like when I started on the Long Drive page, and I, I'm. You know, we're we're trying to act like we're golfers and stuff, and people are just ripping us like you guys suck. And it's just like you know what? I'll just embrace it. We suck. We, we're yeah, horrible absolutely. golfers. Absolutely. But then you go out, and then it's me, Kyle, Tim, and Eddie, and we go at the forty per or forty team scramble and go and dominate Miami and South oh Beach, God. and we How win. Was we're just draining putts. I mean, it was awesome. The, the amount of testosterone on those tee boxes at that time is just <laughs> yeah. incredible. We had we had so much fun in it, and the conditions were so bad. It was like 20, 25 mile per hour winds, but. That was fun for for us to go out and people yeah. actually see. Like we had DJ Khaled's videographer out there <laughs> shooting videos, but it was like instead of Kyle so many, just go hang out with DJ Khaled. Yeah. I'm like, oh my! But that that was fun. Like I mean, we have some game. I mean, a lot of these guys are professional athletes, or they played you know baseball or what have you. They have really good hand eye coordination. So for me, my short game sucks because I don't ever play it. But to hit the center of a club face with an iron, you know, I, I mean, I I've never, yeah, out. I've never been paid to putt the ball before. Yeah. Never, so, never, never in my life. I mean, I'm I don't even practice game one. But yeah, but where you're going with that is that you know, Maurice brought a lot of other people in that that just you know they're not that good at golfers. They just they just enjoy going out and playing, and if they shoot at ninety, they, they want to go out vibe. and have some drinks. See, and I think too, they bring yeah. a different energy. And I think that, that fed into the pandemic, right? In the pandemic, yeah. all these people were looking for something they could do. The golf industry mm -hmm. just exploded, right? Yeah. Instagram was also part of that. I think. You know, we had this this perfect storm of of social media mm -hmm. and the ability to go out and okay. and time to go out and play golf, and that really is our crowd. Yeah. I think it, it's fun. And like I said, the World Championships last year were was was my favorite just because what well, one you got Bryson out here, you got Kyle. I mean, they, they're kind of like like WWE like cartoon characters per se. Like they have these personas, and and people like it. You know, it's it's uh yeah. you know in, Instagram has given us a lot of you know eyeballs that that people probably didn't think that you know whatever they just think that i don't know a bunch i, I think we, that's we, a, we might be meatheads you know i'm not the smartest 100 100 i think that uh and bryson brought a huge obviously a huge crowd there was 150 people that followed him to watch the 12 range balls that he would hit between sets yeah and come back to the stands and wait for him to hit his ball yeah and literally um 
We just brought a good vibe. We, we need a, a different. A, it's a different atmosphere yeah. here. The completely different atmosphere. And um, I was and really wanting to talk crap to him. By the way, uh, <laughs> he walked by me. He goes, "Good luck," and I said, "No, good luck to you, bud. You're in my effing group this time." <laughs> and uh, he got a good chuckle out of it and decided to hit the furthest ball of the day at four. Uh, I think four twelve. Yeah. Against me. Uh, yeah. So a little bit of humble soup, but that was that was he the, embraced the vibe, the 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 energy, the boys. The amount of people that text me. The over under of Bryson's first set at 418 and a half yards. They were wanting to know the wind. It was crazy. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, I had so many people ask me, it's like, do you yeah. think you can hit it 418 and a half? I go, if the wind picks up, yes. 100%. Oh, yeah. And it almost did. In that set, it was going, right? It but it wasn't. The last like 30, 40 seconds. I'm, I'm telling you. And this then the he hit win. that ball and screamed at it. And I said, dang it. Why <laughs> did I poke that damn bear? Yep. <laughs> Good but, dude, though, man. So we need to go ask longest driver's wife, married to long drive, what her squat is. She's she's watch. Go ask her, Aaron. Go go ask her what her squat is. She's a power lifter. All right. Well, let's go see here. We got we got longest driver's wife. We're I, gonna ask her what her oh like, here we record go. Record squat is. We're gonna have to check out. Okay, we're the guys on the, in the booth. We'll go know back what your to record the, squat. Uh, yeah, George is. Hegarty ended up winning the set. Oh my gosh. 363 yards or 363 pounds. Yeah. 363. She's, she's fit. She's fit. If I looked at 363 pounds, I'd probably throw up. It would snap you in half. Are you kidding me? That is unbelievable. I think I tried to deadlift 120 pounds once and said, uh, working out's not for me. I'm going to go back to my usual regimen. I, I just stretched. <laughs> tried to throw it as hard as I could. Well, I, actually, I didn't try to throw it as hard as I could. Just. Good mechanics. I pitched. I wasn't a thrower. I, tried to, I was a pitcher. I tried to throw it as hard as I can, hard as I could, and they called back 88, 89. And I was like, no, you you, you got to be, something's got to be wrong. The setting's wrong. They're like, no, you're 88, 89 guy. And I was yeah. like, oh, okay, I'll stay to my little weak slider. Those change are guys' up. change ups now. Yeah. It's crazy you how see fast that guy from up. Tennessee the other day? 105.5? Oh, yeah. Are Ugh. you kidding me? That sounds like a damn radio station. It is. I, I, I think. Um, my you know, Chap Chapman's, uh, <laughs> Chapman's fastest is at 105.7. So no kidding. But yeah, Do you think just, that guy could play in the major leagues though? Yes. No, he can't. He sucks. No, I, I, yeah, I don't. Yeah, he, yeah, no, yeah. Seriously, he doesn't though. have a gas pedal high enough. You know, I, the fastest way to the big leagues is is 417 for Berkshire, Berkshire on that yeah. last one. I want to know what ball four. that was. I like, I like I know what ball that was. Costello yeah. 93 high and yeah, baby draw. Yeah. Scott Littlefield 74. Drew Cody 369. So let's go to the leaderboard here. So as uh, expected, Berkshire 800 points, winning all four sets with 400 yard drives too. Yep. He's the only one that's hit at 400 yard in every set. And Cole's Col right behind him. Yeah, he won three or four aside from the OB set he had. Galladay, he's right there at 600 as well, filling it up. Haggerty's 525. Ben Knutson 500 points. Where? Scott Littlefield, Tiger Tazawa, both with 400, and Maurice Allen 375. So. All right. And jamming, man. I hope All right, so you yeah, as well. Yeah, live scoring's coming out in the round of 16. We actually weren't going to go live in the broadcast, but me, I got paid a lot of money to come out here today and, and yesterday to announce, and I showed up at 7 o'clock. We're in Las Vegas. I didn't go out, went to bed at, like, 11 o'clock, you know, woke up at 6.30 to get physically, mentally, spiritually prepared this, this for today. And we're like, you know what? We're just going to run the round, the round of 16. I'm like, no, you're not. No, we are not. No, we are not. And this actually worked out great. No, we don't have live scoring right now. Ryan went through a 14-minute soliloquy and why we're not having the live scoring until the round of 16. It was perfectly explained, and he did explain it in three different languages. But, um, you know. Salamat. Here we are. <laughs> here we are. Uh, Kyle Berkshire is looking great. Colton Castro, minus the OB set, looks phenomenal as well. So this is, uh, this is the first group of the last set here, last round, set five. Costello has to win. And and uh God, that guy like Peyton Vanderly. Peyton Vanderly is uh don't let the beard Ooh, fool you. God, That's Costello's a good ball. It's cutting to right side, right center. That's gonna stay in there. That's a good little low, a little low, but that was a good ball there. Yesterday was a lot of fun sitting behind the guys, but Costello is so fast. I mean, he is so smooth, but then his hands yeah, well, what did he do? You definitely don't want to get punched by that guy. Oh, yeah, no kidding. That's a that's <laughs> good night. That's yeah. a that's a that's a facial reconstruction right there. Yeah, he's a big dude too. Didn't look satisfied. He went back and asked the ball caller what the number was. That is the most beautiful ball caller. A little bit higher. Uh, here though, by the way. Yeah. So, I think her name sport. is uh, Sarah. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, she must have. Uh, I feel bad for whoever she's married with, or that that poor guy. Oh, he yeah, he yeah, he no, he's tough. He's a good <laughs> dude. He he uh he does it right. You don't mess with him. Five, five, yeah. Don't mess with Ryan Reesbeck is talking about his beautiful wife. That's right. Who has I mean, birthed five kids? I mean, honestly, That's right. Ryan, how do you feel today, though? Like, what do you what are you trying to do here today? What do you? I'm trying to stay out of the sun. Yeah. I'm trying to drink a lot of liquids. Um. My uh, my legs are shot, so yeah. uh, it's all about that's an excuse managing my energy at this point. So, so. you're gonna go to the, t the D10 or what? Huh? Um, I gotta stay with the LD30 plus. That's yep. the that's that my was my age. best so set was it, the 30 plus. It it took me it took me a few years to sl I I used to be that guy that would swing like the 293 296 CPM shaft, which and now you're talking with, into the three to four, four to four five X. X. Yeah, it's right? like four X. Yeah, it's like stupid stiff. But for whatever reason, that that's what worked for me, probably because it helped straighten my drive out a little bit. But it, it has taken me about three years to, to learn how to swing a softer shaft. No. And now I'm in, that's, the, that's my range. If I go to a D10 I, in competition, I shut, shut the face. So. Jesse Pedersen has entered the chat room. The greatest slinger of all time. Started out 25 yards OB and just bring it right back in, and that ball lands hot. How is Canada land up there, Jesse? Oh, uh, Jesse, what a beard you have, too. I mean, you and Jesus. And his boots. I love uh, those boots he practices in. Jesse Pedersen's a legend. All right, let's check out the leaderboard here. And let's see uh, this group here, the results. Peyton Vanderley, 364, Costello, okay. Costello going OB. I could tell he hit a ball that he liked. He got went back for the yardage, did not get it. So that's gonna it's gonna knock out Mark Costello. That's gonna give Maurice Allen a shot, who's coming up here. He's in slot number one. Uh Victor Bourget here in slot four. Yeah, I'd say it'd be nice to see Maurice uh win this yeah. one. Because Maurice will be at five seventy five, I reckon. Let's check out the leaderboard. We'll see. Yeah, Maurice Maurice would be at five seventy five. Uh, right now, on the bubble is Peyton uh, Vander. Got his fifth Vanderle set in though, but yeah, it, it, he's on the bubble, so he's he's got the benchmark. As he would be the sixth guy. He would be the wild card right now. This is going to be one where it said it's going to be probably like almost six hundred points to to get in. Maurice likes it. He's back. Maurice Allen yelling in slot number one, and I I, I was able to watch him hit ten balls in the range. And he really truly looked good. I mean, I don't I don't necessarily say he was going full throttle, but there's a reason why he's a world champion and there's a reason why he's got who knows how many wins worldwide. He's he's tough. And um, you know, curious to see how that hand holds up. But he's been playing a lot of golf. So but a little bit different when you're going full full gas, you know, full throttle. Yeah. yeah. So he knows he had to go he has to go win win in order to get in. I want to give a shout out to uh, Andrew Gregoire. With Fortify providing our backup internet services. If you have a business that can't lose internet, you need to call Andy at Fortify. 100%. Backup internet so you never go down. Uh, Speaking of Antarctica, he's the number one sales salesman, and they have the best Wi-Fi in Antarctica. They do. Yep. You're welcome for that I plug. Wish, I wish him and his bald head were here. No, I mean, that, he'll, honestly, he'll be in Denver, though. That, he'll be in right? Denver. Yeah. The battery pack wireless device, right? That is... Uh, you don't need any any landlines for it, and it'll run your internet. High speed. Well, Big Thunder, go to bed, and then come back in what? Uh, four hours. Get four hours of sleep. We'll be live at three th uh, three o'clock, um, uh, Pacific time, That's and right. uh, the round of sixteen. So get some sleep. Yeah, Maurice Allen's here in his last set, knowing that he has to go win win to be at five seventy five. But that nest, I think that would actually be the Bubble. bubble. Yeah, it's bubble. That would too. be the bubble for s four dudes. Well, no, there's there's well, a couple Scott guys at 525 Little, and Scott Littlefield could go to six. Tiger Tazawa could go to six. Mm -hmm. So Ben Knudsen could go seven if he wins. So I think it's yet to be determined. But to give himself a shot, he's definitely got to win this or he's out. Mm -hmm. I mean, he liked that first one. He usually doesn't yell at them unless they're pretty good. So. Yeah. Not no, real happy with that last one. But I used to be a real big yeller when I was doing the Ooh. amateur stuff. I, I was I was a real big yeller. What is his name? Yeah, Victor. Victor's got some speed. He does. Yeah. He does. Oh, yeah. 
He's a big guy, too. Victor had a couple of rough rounds earlier, else I think he would be in a better position. So Yeah, Victor's got some 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 hand speed there. Yeah, that was – we, Well, he hit we, yesterday, too. He qualified for Worlds, right? I, th- I think so. He did. So, yeah, that's that's taxing on the body. I don't care what anybody Especially says. You have heat. to hit so – he has to hit in the, reg- uh, the, the local, uh, you know, a couple days ago. Then he has to hit in a regional and has to come back. It's not like the World Championships where you hit five sets a day. But – um said big set here for Maurice Allen. This will put him, I would think, on the bubble at least like a, as a wild card. I mean, there's some some outside chances here that he sneaks in to fifth place, but he had to go win-win in order to give himself a chance to advance to the round of 16. Maurice at 380. And we're looking at the wins. There's not, there's not, or, uh, the flags, there's not any wind at all. It's dead. He got dead it. Dead calm. He got Maurice it. ends up winning the set by two yards over Victor Bogert. So Maurice Allen will be at 575. I can I can safely say he'll be on the bubble here. Tyga needs to get a win. Tyga right now is at 400 points. So, so this this, set this is a big a set. Yeah. yeah, I I think Jacob Galladay is in at 600 points. He's but definitely for in. Ben Knutson and Scott Littlefield. No, Scott Tyga. Little, no, you so see, you got you got Scott Tyga. Littlefield and Tyga. So if let's and just ben say let's, let's say Galladay is the is the spoiler or not spoiler but wins this set. Tyga will be at could potentially only be at a at a hundred at five hundred. Scott Littlefield can only be at five hundred, and then you got Ben Knutson. Knutson's on the, so Jacob Galladay could be the spoiler here uh, per se. He like if like he like wins this set, too. like if if you're Maurice, you want you want he, he pretty much knocks out Tyga and Scott if, Littlefield with the win. Yep. Right. And Galladay then, wins this. He's he's gonna uh he's gonna pretty much secure Maurice Allen here. So Knutson got to finish top two. Galladay's sweet. He is so filling smooth, it yeah. up, dude. Yep. I think he's like, he's four yep. for six every set. He's yep. got, or somewhere in that zone. That dude is just on it. So he's on a different level than most long drivers. He's playing for that performance bonus as well as points. Yep. <laughs> and that's the thing that we haven't even mentioned is that these guys are playing for more than just, uh, you know, trying to win the tournament. Obviously, they want to win it. But a lot of balls in play, longest gr- uh, longest set of, of, of the round of uh, 16 hitters. And... Um, Longest did, ball. We did, got longest ball. Most balls in play. And best then best. And then best set. Longest set. Yeah. Yep. So, so three phases. Did, three phases. Galladay looks that. great, man. Did he you just feel good. the temperature go up about 15 it degrees? Got, got I think the wind stopped. Or Yeah. It's Holy pretty smokes. dead out there. I mean, there's a couple of them moving, but not, not my, too many. My phone's overheating. All right. Oh, man, I wish we had some numbers. You want to go... You want to go peak? peak? Yeah. We're going to send Aaron Hoffman, Shoeless Joe Aaron, over to get some. Right now, uh, we are in Jacob Gallagher. I think that's what they call him, crazy. He's at 380 right now. Let's go to uh, Mr. Scott Littlefield over here. Let's see what he has right now. What is Mr. Scott sitting at right now? He's at 359. So we got a 380, 359 ball for Scott Littlefield. And we also have. Looks to be a, what, 364? 364 for Mr. Benjamin Knutson. Let's go over here to the far number one slot with Mr. Tyga. Tyga is sitting at 376 right now, 376. So we got, uh, we got a little shootout right here. All right, back to us. All right, We're gonna so wait. Jacob Galladay was... Uh, he was uh, in the lead there right now when I went to go check at 380. Galladay? Galladay was at 380, first ball, uh, 350 number, a 360 number, and then a 370 number. So so Scott Littlefield, if he takes second place, I think he was at five. Uh, oh, uh, who was at 500 points? Scott Littlefield was. He was at 500, and then Tyga and... and uh, no, 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 I think excuse Benjamin, me, Ben Knutson was. Scott yeah. and Tyga were at 400. So I okay. just looked when I walked. So Benjamin was, Knutson uh, takes second place. He's going to have 600 points. Yeah, so, so Maurice he would, would, he would put Maurice on the bubble. But like I said, out. No, I think Maurice would be in sixth. Depending on that last ball, Ben was sitting in third place as I went to go check. It was uh, Jacob Galladay was leading the set. Tiger was in second. Okay. Yeah, we're we'll gonna, see what they call, though. We're uh, suspensefully anticipating these numbers. Tiger, 399. Wow. Well, that was a big number. That big number ball. for Tiger. Oh. Jacob Galladay takes, takes uh, second, place. second place. So here we go. This is going to be the update we'll that we're looking leader, for. We'll check the leaderboard now. So, Maurice Allen at 575. He's hanging tight. He's in. Maurice is in. The only guy that can take his spot is George Hegarty. So, Maurice is going to at least... What about Mr. Worst Will case, Hogue? 
No, Will. I think Will's, Will's too far behind. Will's out. All right. All right. So right now, uh, the guys that are definitely in: Kyle Berkshire, Colton Casto, Jacob Galladay, and Taiga Tazawa. Those guys are definitely in. Maurice Allen is currently in fifth place, with Benjamin Knudsen on the wild card bubble. If George Hegarty takes third place, he will be tied with Maurice Allen. If he comes in second or better, he will knock Maurice Allen into the wild card. If no, they no, tie. No. Oh yeah, yeah that's yeah. right. Yep. Yep. So George Hegarty right now, first or second, he yeah. he knocks out. Hegarty Maurice. has to come in, in, in first or second uh, then, to put Maurice on the in the wild card round. If well, he comes they would in third. They would be uh, they would be in a playoff for fifth place. They would, and then there would be a wild card. So if George Hegarty takes third, yep. him and Maurice are going to go against each other to get automatically into the round of sixteen, and then there's going to be a wild card. Whoever loses, so Hegarty has to take third or better to, to stay alive. And George has his work cut out for him because if, if Will's out of the competition at this point, He's he may just be free swinging and might catch a great ball. Kyle, Kyle, Kyle stepped on the gas there. <laughs> so did so Cole. Yard. Watch That's how the these two guys hit next to each other. Well, Colton just went to Kyle and said, come on, Kyle, after obviously Colton hit a good ball. Yeah. so The good thing about these two is they practice together yeah, a lot at the One Stop Power Shop. So very comfortable. So if George Hegarty hits a ball in play right now, and say he takes fourth place, he's going to go up against uh, Benjamin Knudsen for the wild card. So Hegarty, all he has to do is put a ball in play right now to stay alive in the tournament. Okay. Yeah, that was probably the ideal ball of the day. That might be uh, the longest ball that he hit in that set. Yeah. It was high, little draw right down the middle. We'll see if Colton poked the bear right there and woke him up to... Kyle is just on cruise control. Yeah. It's so much fun watching him hit a golf ball. I know I sound repetitive, but he just he's the best in the business for a reason. Did he get a haircut? It looks like he got a haircut. It looks like he, he might have taken the split three. ends. He might he might have taken an inch or two off. He took the split ends off, that's all. He looks a little bit more full. Yep. Man, I, I'm dying to know George ha George Haggerty's number. Yep. We'll have everything for you guys. Round of 16. Numbers, track, man. We all know that the high ball is the way to go. It's the first time I've seen Colton hit a different driver. He, he, and for me, honestly, like I'd like to see him hit the D60. I really do. He's so fast. He's so strong. Like His dispersion is going to be tighter. Maybe we shouldn't well, tell him anything, I, right? I, 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 tell him, tell him to I told him to hit the LD30+. Plus, but, yeah. I mean, you only need to be so fast. I th I think if you're too fast, sometimes you overcompress this golf ball. So yeah, what we're hitting is a top flight bomb, um, you know. So, so are you saying that you have an advantage, Ryan? Are you right in the I'm sweet old, zone of this? I'm old. I have an advantage. <laughs> Slower swing speeds get more more out of it. So. All right, so this will be interesting. As we mentioned, if George Hegarty comes in third place, him and Maurice Allen will be fighting for the fifth spot to get automatically into the round of 16. If he comes in fourth, he will be in a playoff against. Um, who's he in a playoff? Uh, Benjamin Knudsen. If he takes second or better, he's in. He's in, yeah. Maurice would be a wild card. All right, we're going to get some numbers here in just a second. I can see the cursor in the field of the Excel spreadsheet that we're looking at. <laughs> oh, my stomach. There's butterflies. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, maybe that was my dinner last night. Uh, was, uh, we're going back not to Not a lot of places 21. to eat. In Mesquite at 10.30 at night. Haggerty, 83. Woo. Hogue, 85. Uh-oh. Colton Casto, 427. <laughs> Oof. And Kyle Berkshire, 415. So Colton Casto, 427 yards. Goes to a different shaft setup. That's the first time in a long time I've seen Colton go with a different shaft. And I honestly think that's a better play. So, so Maurice yeah. Allen, 575. He takes fifth spot. Yep. Maurice is in, man. Uh, we so, got Berkshire. World so, champion Colton Casto, stud, who I think will be there at the end. Jacob Galladay, Taiga, Tazawa, and Maurice Allen are definitely in. So now George Hegarty and Benjamin Knudsen will be fighting for the wild card spot. Yep. All right, this is wow. exciting. Little play, little bonus little ball play in here. Yeah. Little play in. This is a good. I love these. It should be a six ball set. Got my son Cash here running the clock for us today. Thank you, 
Honestly, the best here. clock guy we've ever had, I think. Honestly, to this point, it's always been on. <laughs> I was running the clock last night for the ladies and missed like three sets. Yeah, that's why but, you're not doing it. But today. the ladies just they just keep hitting. Some <laughs> Ali Mohall from from this area, right? I think she's in Vegas now, but she would hit all six balls and have a minute left. Yep. <laughs> she didn't. And she was good. Yep. She was hitting like five. She hit six balls in at one t- uh, one set. She was hitting like four, five, and six every set. Balls in play. She was a machine last night. 427 is a beautiful number. Yeah, Jesse Pedersen, he said uh, Kyle's hair looks a little more fundamentally religious with that trim working the creepy angle now, too. What a savage. Yes. We got (laughs) Gindy Wavin in the house. Wendy Gavin. The beautiful wife of Jeff Gavin, who won yesterday. Jeff just looked... He's man. Like he's, he's like a, how old? When he put on the how old is he's Jeff? He's fifty four, and he drinks he, from the Fountain of Youth, and uh, he drinks Tim Hortons. Yeah, these Canadians have just so much honor. I, lo- right I love, I, mean, I they, love they how he's like. Oh, I practice like once a month, <laughs> and he's it's like two seventeen ball speed after like six hours of hitting. Oh he's my still, god, uh, man, he's good. Are, he it's a good high draw. What Most are your things. what's your attack when you're going into it? You know, just I mean, is this? You just have no holds bar. You just got a full sin at this moment. Or are you trying to Me? for sure for, not go like, OB and then go? In, what, what's your for these guys? Yeah, are for you going ben full sin all six? Or are you trying to three get balls, one in and go? Three balls, I'm no, going to put a ball, ball in play. play. Yep. Yeah, because because I've seen a lot of times where I mean even uh, in Florida, Damian Dooley and I were in a playoff and both of us went OB. Yeah, and had a I mean, double playoff. Double playoff. Yeah. My yeah, Mobley, like yeah. I said, Mobley yeah. yesterday knows that he has to put a ball in play. Maybe. Relaxes just a little bit, knowing he has to get in, hits the farthest ball of his tournament yeah. at 385 yards. So, all right, so we got George Hegarty. Yeah, go go over there and give us a and Benjamin Knutson three balls. Maybe we should have two of you go over there. Yep, I think it's six. I think it's six ball. Six ball. That boy. We got here. Maurice. Maurice is in the house. Yeah, stick around. After this set. Is that ball in place, sir? Yeah, no, Reese is right, actually surprised that he made it. We have to remind him that he's a world champion and he's won all over the world, but you know, he hasn't competed in a while. 372 yard ball for Mr. Uh, Benjamin. A little Knutson. crossover ball talk, for sorry. Mr. George Haggerty is OB left. OB left. <laughs> Second ball is OB left for Mr. Benjamin Knutson. OB left. Let's see here. We got uh, ball two. Ball two for Mr. George. <laughs> <laughs> Another OB left ball, OB left. All right, here we go. Ball three, Mr. Benjamin Knutson. He's sitting at the 370 zone. Looks to be OB left again. OB left. He's hitting a pretty, pretty good high oh, ball. Oh, they're actually right hitting now. six we'll balls. He gets here, I'll go stand behind it. Like I said, Maurice is uh, ben, said he's surprised that he's here. Let's see here. Ball three for Mr. George. Ball three for Mr. George. All right, we're coming over with you. Thank you. Thank you for the help. OB left, George Hegarty. Another, both guys just went OB left on ball uh, ball four for Mr. Benj Knutson and ball three for George. So uh, no marks for George right now. I'll get him. I'll feature him in slot number one. Yeah, that, that was rough. Yeah, OB left. Okay, big ball, right side, look at it, it's going to be OB right, 100%. A little spinner, too, spinner. All right, so Hegarty here has uh, about 25 seconds left to hit two balls. He's really taking his time here, trying to find a ball on the grid. This one's trying to hug down that line. This one's going to go OB left, big hard hook. All right, so we got, got thir- Mr. Ben at 370. He's in the 370 mark. Big ball left Ooh. side. If it hangs on, it's gonna be really close here. All right, Hegarty's flirting down that right side. He hit a good ball though. Those blue balls are so hard to see. I, I tell you, as a competitor, it is the worst ball to hit. But I understand four colors. You got to rock it. It is what it is. Yeah, but All they right. do give you blue balls. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna have Maurice Allen come in here. All right. Come on in. Come in and talk a little bit. I mean. I'll, I'll give you three minutes. All right. Marisa's going to give us three a couple minutes. Zero. Let's go. But um, 
Marie said he was ready to get a flight home, and uh, he had to go win-win. Get some water in you. But, um, all right, we got the 2018 world champ in the house, Maurice Allen. Well, how are you feeling? Tired. <laughs> it's been a minute. Three years. It's been a while. Yeah. Talk about your hand, because we mentioned you uh, had five broken bones in the hand. Yeah, between the hand and wrist, uh, it's it's not good. I can barely hold on to the club, so I wasn't expecting anything at all, honestly. Um, I just wanted to come out hit, see how the hand holds up, if it holds up, and kind of go from there. But it's, it's not great. Um, competition is definitely different now. Uh, it's a lot of guys that weren't around three years ago, which is good. That lets you know that the sport has new blood going on in it. Um, that part's really, really good. So that lets you know that the sport has a sense of life, some healthiness to it from that part. Um, but, you know, everybody's – it's it's different. It's difficult. It's a lot of different ways to hit the ball far. So it's it's cool. Yeah, I, um, yeah, you said that you hadn't been out in, in three years. And, um, you know, like there's guys like now that you've never even heard of and you see and you're like, uh, that guy just went 220. I've never even seen him hit a golf ball. There's guys like in the amateur <laughs> amateur division that are going like 215 and like, dude, you're not an amateur at 215. So it's 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 a lot different. But, you know, it's been nice uh, that the PLDA has, you know, given us the opportunity to come out and, and, and compete. And you know, like I said, it's been, it's been a while, but, uh, it's fun to watch you hit and, and, uh, knowing that you had to go win, win and, and to get it done, you got it done. Wasn't expecting that. Um, I hit the ball pretty much the same number all day long. Um, there's just one of the big things for me is being handsy. So being able to move the hands and, um, I couldn't, I can't really flip my hands like I used to just because my left hand just doesn't allow me to do it. So win-win, I definitely didn't see that happening. Uh, there was times where I was third and fourth in my set, and then it would have won the other sets, which is, you know, that's the breaks. That's how it goes. And I was cool with that. Like I said, I came here with no expectations at all. Um, started kind of looking at flights. It was like, all right, well, maybe I'll go home early for the first time. But it was, it's cool to get through. Um, that was, I think I texted you last night and I told you my yep. goal was just to get out of my first group and then move forward. So that was different. Yeah, well, it was fun to watch. Like I said, it, it's nice to have, you know, world champions back. You know, we're missing Joe, we're missing Tim. And, uh, you know, like last year at the world championships, I feel like we were missing eight to t uh, 10 key guys that, that would have made the experience better uh, and to have a stronger field. Some guys just couldn't make it over. And I was hurt. You were so hurt. And you were, and you, and you were hurt. But, you know, at the end of the day, and I'll say it again, because, like, these telecasts are, like, eight hours long, that final 16 was the fastest final 16 ever by, like, four or five mile per hour average of ball speed. And they're using golf balls that don't even compress to these type of speeds that the guys are creating now. I mean, look at, like, Colton Castle. He's starting well, I think the thing you have to remember, right, is evolution happens in all sports. It doesn't matter if it's football, if it's track and field, if it's basketball. The more that people see it, the more that it grows. Iron the talent pool, iron, right? well, the talent pool is going to get deeper, right. you know, and that's that's just real. The bars continue to raise. Every world championship should be the hardest world championship to date. Yep. Everyone moving forward, it should never be oh, ten years ago it was harder and things like that. That's not that's not real. That's not realistic. You should always get new blood in there. Obviously, the people who were there before are going to get older. They may age out. They may inspire younger people to come in and play. And you're getting people in earlier. I mean, you're seeing 18, 19, 20, 21 year old kids coming in the sport versus guys like you and I who had played other sports, had found our way through the journeyman of professional sports. And then from there saying, all right, well, we can't do this, this, this and this anymore. So now we'll turn the long drive. You're getting guys who are coming fresh out of high school, college, like, hey, I'm going straight to long drive. So <laughs> you're catching them more in their prime, if that makes sense. Yep. So you're, you should expect to see the bar be raised significantly. And that's what you really want in the sport. You don't want it to die out. Um, it's in a funky state. It's weird at this particular point um, because when you look at it, you need to get some money back into it. You need to get sponsors into it. You need to get all these different things. And having new, fresh faces, younger faces, you know, going to a younger generation, looking at the top golf crowd, that's really what you want to excite the sport. So I think it's great. Well, I said last year, Bryson coming out was awesome. I mean, to be able to have 45, 46,000 people live on YouTube, 
obviously he was the needle last year, but they were able to see guys like Kyle Berkshire, guys that have big social media followings that they want to see, you know, compete. And, um, you know, tip of the cap to Robbie. I mean, he, you know, Peterson, we got, they say we joke around, say we have more technology than a Kiss concert. To be able to have that data in front of us, especially sitting here in the booth, being able to see spin rates, launch angles. You know, we got Jacob Galladay sitting next to us right now. You and him are very similar when it comes to ball striking and speed, and you guys are masters of hitting the center of the club base. And people that are watching for the first time, they're accustomed to seeing guys, oh, like Kyle's going 230, what have you. But you guys can sit at 212, 213, 214 and can, and, and can compete and beat these guys because you're working on different things, landing angles, spin rates, launch. There's a lot more than just getting up there and just swinging out of, out of your shoes. And, and uh, there is a science to this that a lot of people just don't really know from the outside looking in. Right. And that's that's the positive of it. That I means it's like anything else. It's evolution. You'll continue to grow. People, your fan base will grow. The information will grow. That's really what it's all about. I mean, you look at your major leagues, MLB, NBA, uh, NFL, they didn't happen overnight, right? Mm -hmm. So it's every league goes through. You look at the NBA and the ABA. You know, every league goes through its moment. Right. You know, baseball's gone through it every time you turn around. <laughs> and but it continues to come back. So it's all about the hard work of people who are coming in here, putting the scheduling together, putting the sponsorship packages together. And then the other parts on the hitters, the hitters have to show up continuously. Um, you know, there'll probably be some growth in the grassroots side to get people to come out and get it. Mm -hmm. There's some things in the past that were great mm -hmm. that maybe can and should come back if once we get to a certain level. Uh, and then there's some things in the past that you need to stay away from. And that's. You know, you take the pros and the cons and you learn. But I think the sport's going to get better, hopefully. Um, it's interesting. It's a lot of fun. I still think you need the OEMs to be a part of it regardless. I don't care how you look at it in the last 15 years. There has not been any OEM that has really put a highlight of any long drive professional, although 90% of their marketing is based on distance. Mm -hmm. Tough pill to swallow, but it needs to happen. So yeah. I think when that happens – when you start looking at the crossover between a lot of the, in the last, I'd say, five years, you've seen a lot of the PGA Touring pros really giving a little more love to the long drive guys, paying attention to the long drive guys, right. mentioning the long drive guys. Yep. I think that's when you see it. But when you see it on the bigger networks like the NBCs, the CBSs, all these other people in their telecast mentioning it, um, similar to what you saw with Golf Channel on some of the different morning shows that they had when you start seeing people doing that more often then i think that'll kind of pique the interest as well but you know you'll get it in places where we'll start going to bigger cities bigger populations more people you'll get good yeah well like i said i said earlier today you know you're, you're making your debut for the first time in three years and and uh i remember I that one ball all yeah. day i yelled yeah. at one ball well you did it was nice to see well, some emotion out of you yell, though i mean yeah I'm you, glad I won that set. I seen you yelling. Well, you had there. to win the set. <laughs> I seen you yelling a few years back, man. But, it's good to see you yell again. But 2017 was a big year, you know, and and social media was becoming bigger. And um, you know, you go out there, and I, I said it. I don't know how many guys were. We're all on the same threads and stuff. I'm like, I hope Maurice wins every TV TV tournament besides Worlds because I want to win Worlds in 2017. <laughs> you know, because like people that are from the outside looking in that don't know really much about lawn drive. Like you go out there, and I mean, you're a personality. And, um, you know, you get interviewed and it's like, what is Maurice going to say? And obviously you go out in Denver, you win Denver, you know, you even said, I remember it was the NBA finals and, um, you said you were the greatest athletes on the planet. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, you know what? If someone talks trash to me, it was like, I was a first rounder, you know, like the pirates, I'm like, were you first rounder? I was, you know, I was like, I'm going to roll with it. I like it. And, um, it just brought a lot of eyeballs, you know, into the sport that weren't necessarily look, looking for lawn drive. And I think right. that the social media world, like a lot of these guys just want to go out and have fun with their friends and shoot 90 to 100 and make fun of themselves or not, you know, whatever. They don't take golf that serious. And lawn drive is fun because, like I said, with, with my page, it's just like I hit a 350, but I four putt and three putt all the time. You know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's different ways to do it, right? So yeah. that golf is hard. Golf is getting longer. I think that. There were some comparisons early on. I think Jamie did a few things like 2013 or something mm -hmm. like that, 14, where there were some comparisons between him and PGA Touring Pros. Obviously, Bryson coming and doing his thing. Uh, people tend to forget Tony Finau a lot. Oh, my God. I don't know why, but, you know, you look at him, Gipper, you look at Ben, mm -hmm. those three, uh, even if you look at Cameron Champ, there's a few guys that flat out move it, and it's it's hard for people to see that, but 
you know, I think it's going in the right direction. I think you get some good grids, you get some fast rolling grids, and well, you get some stuff. Well, March, March was giving it up. Yeah, like I said, we, yeah. we talked about Jacob, who's sitting right next to us. Um, you know, I'm like, Galladay's got to be one of the favorites just because he hits so many balls in play, and this grid is given up to guys that – are a 210, 212 guy that might not carry it as far. And I said, well, I talked about it to you on the range. In 2018, when you won the World Championships, you were carrying it two, three yards farther than everybody. Your launch and your spin, like you were 190 to 195 feet the entire tournament, and you you figured out your launch and spin, and, and uh, you're carrying it. It was a carry grid. There was no roll at whatsoever compared to, like, Steenberg when he hits a 360, like, the year before, and it rolls, yeah. you know, like 60, 70 yards. Oh. Yeah. This I mean, is the carry grid today. And that's the positive of the sport. Different venues give rise to different types of ball flights. It's no different than what you see on the PGA Tour. I mean, 7,000 yards plays different from course to course to course. Uh, yeah. Same thing happens here. From grid to grid to grid, 400 is a different ball. It's not always the same conditions, altitude, turf conditions, all kinds of stuff. So mm -hmm. you get out there, and I think if people start seeing that more and more, it'll be cool. But you just got to find a way to make it cool, make it exciting, make it fun. Um get people following, build the fan base up, and go from there. Well, your three minutes turned into about 13 minutes. I see, minutes. That. I see um, that, man. You got me Get some rest. Uh, let's, we're going to go grab some food. Oh, uh, we'll Chris be back Hall, at one. you were extremely ugly. <laughs> <laughs> I love that guy swing, though, man. What about it do you love? It's terrible. He's a ball player. He's, He's a, a ball what? player. He's a ball player. Ball player of what? I don't know. I mean, what his brother played player? the big leagues for His long brother, time. he didn't play in anything. <laughs> He His brother? Gro no, Chris. Oh, oh, Chris. Chris played in the grocery store league. Stop <laughs> giving Chris. He played for like the Win Dixie Wildcats or something like that. <laughs> sit here and tell Chris he's a good, he's a ball player. He Chris does. ain't no. That's so. Funny. No, he's probably one of the most fit seniors I've ever seen. I'd say between him and Gavin, it doesn't get any more fit as a fifty-plus-year-old person. Yeah. Honestly. He's had a handstand for probably over the three-minute mark. I guarantee. Yeah. You, I guarantee you could walk up and down the, the road doing that. Yeah. The yeah. two of them. They're not human. I'll give you that. <laughs> yeah. But he's definitely not a ball player. Don't tell him that. <laughs> well, Maurice, good luck. Uh, we'll be announcing here um, you oh, know, at Bryson, 3 o'clock. What's up, kid? The DeChambino. I tell you, the DeChambino, his hand, you know, yeah, whatever. Yeah, we the same. Well, mine was worse than his, but Jesus. Yeah. But, yeah, like, he, he may or may not have hit next next week. They say hit. He might play in PGA uh, Championship. I, we don't yeah. know. We don't know. You'll see what happens. You Whatever know? he does, he'll do what he does. Yep. No, but, but cool like, stuff, man. It was fun. I don't know how in the world I got through. I was expecting the playoff. Uh, didn't get through the playoff. I actually got through. So I guess that flight that I thought I was going to have, I'm not on. Winners find ways to win. Sure. Yep. That's what makes you feel good. Yep. All right. But uh, we'll be back 1 o'clock, which is 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then Maurice will be hitting with Jacob Galladay over At here. At 1? At 3 o'clock. Oh, at 3. So you, you have a little bit of a break. So get hydrated. Yeah, I made the same face. Let's do it together. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> well, thanks for your time. We'll be right back after this. Yeah, I've heard. Good. I hope that it's, I guess, any publicity, any publicity is good. All right, folks. Uh, so that's going to do it for group two. Um, you can see the leaderboard there. Kyle Berkshire, Colton Castor, Jacob Galladay, Maurice Allen, and Taiga Tazawa will be moving on. Uh, we're going to take a short break and we'll shut it down again. And uh, we'll be back at 1 o'clock. See you then.